Good morning, Bedford View Methodist Church family. Welcome to our Ascension Day service on the 21st of May in 2020. Friends, as we meet this Thursday, we remember the day Jesus ascended to heaven as he promised or as it was prophesied about. Therefore, friends, let us then begin with the call to worship. Psalm 47. Our call to worship this morning is Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amidst shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of, tra of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing to him psalm of praises. God reigns over the nations, God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of God of Abraham for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. That is our God indeed. Let us then light the peace of candle, the peace candle, sorry, and open with prayer. Let us pray. Father, we come before your throne of grace on this ascension day as we remember our Lord Jesus Christ as he was lifted up to heaven. Father, bless and guide this service. Be with us, your people who believe in you. And we give thanks, Father, for the fulfillment of this prophecy or promise of ascension. Be with us, guide us, lead us. May this ascension day bring meaning and purpose in our lives. We pray all these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, our reading this morning comes from the gospel according to St. Luke, Luke chapter 24. I'm going to read from verse 50 to verse 53. Our reading on this Ascension Day service is Luke chapter 24. I'm going to read from verse 50 to verse 53. The Ascension of Jesus. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, open our hearts and our minds this morning as we remember our Lord ascending to heaven. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we gather here this morning on this Ascension Day, on a Thursday morning, on this online worship service. And we are still on our Easter season, which then will end on the 31st of May, which is, will be Pentecost Sunday. So as we gather here this morning, it is a special day on our Christian calendar. It's a special day for us, those who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, as he ascended to heaven as prophesied and promised. So today is about Jesus being lifted up or being taken up to heaven to be united with the Father. It's about Jesus to be seated on the right hand of God. It's about Jesus being glorified and as exalted as our Lord and as our King. This happened or took place on the 40th day after his resurrection. So today we are gathered then to celebrate, commemorate and remember that day on the 40th day after his resurrection as Jesus was taken up to heaven. What is it then that I want us to learn on this Ascension Day service? Friends, my focus or my theme this morning is the disciples' response to Jesus' uh, ascension. So let me say it again. My focus for this morning is the disciples' response to Jesus' ascension. How did they respond when Jesus ascended to heaven? For the past two years, I've spoken about the meaning and the importance of ascension and what it means and what happened and what did Jesus do or what Jesus did. 
But today, I want to mainly focus on the disciples, those that witnessed this day, those that saw him being lifted up to heaven. How did they react or how did they respond to this situation or to what happened? The first thing that happened, because I just want to mention two things, I have two points this morning. The first thing, as we read Luke chapter 24, verse 52, when he was lifted up in front of their eyes, because remember, it says he lifted his hands, he blessed them, and as he was doing that, then he was lifted up in front of their eyes, and then the Bible says this is how they responded, or they reacted. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. So when they saw him being taken to heaven, they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. So their reaction or response was worshipping Jesus and rejoicing. And if you notice that, we, we hardly hear Luke uses these kinds of words like worship. But today we find him saying, when the disciples saw what had happened, instead of them freaking out, Instead of them running away, instead of them being scared, what happened is they worshipped God and returned to Jerusalem rejoicing. Why? Why were not they afraid? Why were they not scared? Why did not they run away when they saw what happened? Because let me tell you, let me be honest with you, friends. If I was in that same situation, seeing my King, my Lord Jesus Christ, the man I've served for three years, miraculously being lifted up by the clouds and going up to heaven, I would have been scared. Maybe I would have ran away, thinking maybe I would have been taken as well, or I don't know how I would have, I would have reacted, but I know that there would be fear in me. But no, not with the disciples. Not with the disciples, but they worshipped him and rejoiced. And for the first time we hear, because remember, when Jesus was telling them the news that he was going to the Father, he was going to leave them, they were always sad. But today, we don't hear them being sad, but we hear them rejoicing and also worshiping God. Why were they reacting? Why did they react like this? Because, friends, it was the fulfillment of the promise. The promise was fulfilled that day because, remember, Jesus kept saying to them, I will leave you, I will go to the Father. So now they saw with their own eyes what Jesus has been telling them all this time that I will be taken to the Father. They saw it. So they worshiped God because they saw God fulfilling that promise in front of their eyes. It was a fulfillment of promise, hence they worshipped and rejoiced because now they knew that Jesus will be seated at God's right hand. So the prophecies, the promises are being fulfilled. So the disciples worship God because now they realize that this God is an awesome God. God that keeps his promise. Because why? They saw it with their own eyes. Now they knew that the promise will be fulfilled of Jesus interceding on their behalf. Because Jesus promises that when I go to the Father, I'll intercede on your behalf. So friends, let us be assured then this morning that Jesus is seated with God and interceding on our behalf. We should rejoice and we should worship him. Excuse me. They worshiped and rejoiced because the promise of the Holy Spirit being sent was in fulfilled in front of their eyes because they knew that now that Jesus was going to the Father, now that is lifted up to heaven, they were not going to be alone because he told them in John 14 that I will ask the Father to send you an advocate, the Holy Spirit, the comforter that will guide you. So today is the fulfillment of that promise. That is why they worshiped and rejoiced. They worshipped and rejoiced because Jesus' earthly ministry was being finished at that moment. They knew now that it is up to them to take the baton and carry on. They knew now that they, they, were, they were ready. They knew now that Jesus had, had done everything on earth. And now it was their turn as they watched him going to heaven. They rejoiced, friends, and worshipped him. Because they have experienced this great moment. Ah, it's so wonderful just to think about it. I get emotional and get goosebumps just thinking about it, witnessing that great moment, seeing Jesus with your own eyes ascending to heaven, going to the Father, and them having to go back and tell those that were not there, but they know it's not a lie, it's the truth, because they were there. They saw it happen. They rejoiced because they experienced a great moment. I'm sure if I was in their shoes then now, apart from being scared from the beginning, just thinking about it now, I would rejoice. 
seeing God at work, seeing God doing things in front of my eyes, seeing Jesus being lifted up in heaven so that this is not just a story or a lie, but this is a truth because why? They've seen it, they've witnessed it, they've experienced it, and now they know the truth. So friends, we should worship him and rejoice because Jesus is in heaven with the Father. Jesus is interceding for you and me. Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit. Now the, those of us who live on this earth, we know we are not alone because the Spirit is sent because Jesus is in heaven with the Father. And secondly, which is my last point, Luke 24, verse 53, after rejoicing, after worshiping, they went back to Jerusalem and they stayed continually at the temple praising God. So not only did they worship him and rejoice, but they remained obedient and praised God. So their response or reaction now, the second one, was obedience and praising God. So the first thing here that we see, the disciples responded by remaining in Jerusalem in the temple courts. Remaining in Jerusalem so that they can be in the presence of God where? In the temple. You would agree with me, that's one of the things we miss by not being at church, is the fellowship part. So they were in fellowship with one another. So they were obedient to a fellowship with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. So they were in fellowship, which is wonderful, which is what we miss, which is what I miss about church, which is what I miss about seeing you because I know every Sunday or, or now today, and pen, or, or sorry, on, on this Ascension Day service, we would go out after the service, I would greet you at the door, would go and have coffee and have a conversation of, about my sermon. And you would ask me questions, I would give you answers. We'd laugh about it and we'll talk about our families, our children. And I would have shared with you this face-to-face -face saying that now KG is walking, is able to walk. Yesterday he started running, which is strange, for an 11-month-old baby running towards me in the kitchen. I was so scared. But I would share those news with you in fellowship in this church. That's what the disciples did. They remained in the temple to break the bread, share with one another great news, share with one another their pain and their sorrow so that they could pray for one another. So they remain praising God, not only obedient by remaining in Jerusalem, because remember, Jesus said you must remain in Jerusalem until you receive the power through the Holy Spirit. That's where the obedience comes from. They knew that before going out to spread the news, they need to go back, remain in the temple, praise God until they receive the power which of the Spirit, which they did later on. But whilst they were there, they did not just stay there, fold their hands, arms, I mean, sorry, or just sit and do nothing. No. They, they continued to praise God because they found things that, to, they, they found reason to praise God. And we have a reason to praise God during this time. Even when we are faced with COVID-19, but we still have a reason to praise God. Even when we are faced with COVID-19, we still have a reason to be obedient to the will of God. We still need to remain in fellowship with our families. A time will come when we'll come back to this church and fellowship with one another. That time will come, friends, I can promise you that. But for now, what I want you to keep in your mind as I conclude is that our response then to the ascension of Jesus Christ, friends, is that we need to remain worshiping God in good and bad times. We need to remain to rejoice in the Lord in good and bad times. We need to remain praising God as those who believe. We need to remain obedient to the will of God. Let us not lose those things because that's what the disciples did. And I believe, and I stand here this morning on this ascension day to say that was a perfect response. And that's the response I want to encourage us to carry it on so that then we can go and share the good news with others after COVID-19. I can't wait for that time when we'll share stories with one another of this time where we're in lockdown, in isolation. Because when we come back, I can promise you this, we'll share stories. And I can promise you this, one of the thoughts I have is that when we come back, we need to have a bring and share so that we can sit around this church and spend hours just sharing stories how God has been good to us. 
because God will always remain good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, I give you thanks and praise for this morning. Thanks and praise for, the, for your word and the reminder of the ascension of Jesus Christ. May you bless us this day. May we stay in faith and in hope, knowing that good times are coming, Father. Bless us, God. Guide and lead us this week. Till we meet again on Sunday morning. We pray all these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.